All right, we got bees between these railroad tires, and you can see we got a pallet, some old doors, or an old door. We're gonna pull some of this stuff off. I don't know how far north and south this colony runs, but uh, they definitely have it going on. Might be a lot bigger than we think it is. <laughs> and they've been here at least a year that we know of, so. Nice, bright Saturday. It's like March 14th or something like that. We're in Mattery, Louisiana. The bees are going in between the railroad tires. They've been here roughly a year or so. Don't know how big the thing is yet, but this door is the first thing I'm going to pull off. And then, uh, I mean, I can see a good bit of comb. I don't know how far back it runs, north and south, but uh, we're doing this today. Hope you enjoy the video. All right. Just to keep them honest, we'll just we'll give them a little pop of smoke. But so far, these bees have uh, not bothered anybody. Oh, incidentally, the guy who called me out, Steve, and uh, Brother Andrew was telling me there's a Japanese plum tree about 15 feet from me right now. And he was telling me, yeah, yesterday they were kind of flying around a little spot. And I didn't think anything of it. Uh, he didn't see a cluster or anything, but we're sitting here talking. <laughs> All of a sudden, the sky's full right around a Japanese plum. So I'm um, putting two and two together thinking that uh, they cast a swarm they went to the plum tree and uh, but they hightailed it I put the box over there and everything and uh, but they had they'd made a decision already to leave so or we'd be filming that right now so uh, but we'll know if they swarm or not uh, once we get into this thing if, you know if there's this hatched out queen cells we'll know for sure I don't hear any piping so, uh, you know, may, but it's also a possibility that that swarm is from another colony somewhere in the area. We have lots of bees down here, okay? Wherever you have mild winters, you have lots of bees. We have mild winters. This year was very mild. Want to come around the back? Yeah, if you don't mind. And then, uh, let's grab this one. Stand it up Pull it over there, the Andrew, some kind of way. And you got it? You need all right. See what you can pull up on that end. Let's start dragging it that way a little bit, I guess. Be careful, there are a couple of bees there. Between the termites and the weather, <laughs> there ain't much left of this. All right. Okay. All right, nothing there. There's the back of it. It's right here. To the back end of it. This is gonna be like a hodgepodge here, folks. Wish there was a good way to do this, but you know the, the ceiling of this thing is obviously compromised. There's no like removing a big section of that OSB because the cone's attached to it. The OSB is falling apart. Being one of these things you just kind of pick at. That is the back end. Very chill bees. Alright. Remember too, I'm standing right in front of their, their entrance. Yeah. So they're kind of, they'll bunch up around me. It's like they have manners. <laughs> you know, instead of just whizzing by me, they're just kind of flying. It, it confuses them, I guess, a little bit. The roof, we'll call it the roof of the hive, is in bad shape. So it's not something you can just pick up and invert or move or anything like that. So uh, what I'm going to try to do, as I'm going to go on the other end, I'm going to start smoking the bees, and I'm going to, I'm going to use some repellent. Honey Bee Gone is the one I use from my friend Scott Derrick in South Carolina of uh, Blythewood Bee Company. And we're going to try to run the bees in the box. Some hives respond exactly the way you want them to with smoke, and, and some of them are very stubborn. Lately, they've been kind of stubborn. We're going to hope for the best, but uh, 
the idea is to run them off the combs and then start pulling some of that comb out. But uh, that's the idea. We're gonna we're gonna smoke, pull comb. And hopefully we, we run the bees in. And we get the queen at some point in the process. Put her in put her in the setup. And uh, so this is the kind of thing you just kind of pick at. All right, here we go. All righty. Hit him with the smoke now. We're gonna go heavy. And then we're gonna use repellent. Alright, they, they're responding, so let's let's let them run a little more. They get hung up, you hit you hit them again. Some more honey? Sure. I'm gonna throw this to you. you ready? Uh -huh. Oh, sorry about that. It is pretty good, huh? Yeah. Some of this stuff is really thick. Ooh, that one burned. I had one get me on my hand. Some things burn more than others. For some reason. That one. Everyone's like fire. <laughs> All right. A whole bunch of drones about to hatch out, folks. Look at them. <laughs> All right. So we just kind of picking away at this thing. And see, the box is right in front of the entrance. That's why they're flying all around the box like that. Again, bees have manners.
All right, folks, so we've been picking away, picking away. So this is what we got. There's a little bit of a comb section I got framed. Let's see if I can't pull out another one. We got, we got a full one in there. In our nuke. We're about to really get down to business. And, you know, a couple of more comb sections or so, and uh, we should be able to force them into our box, okay? We're just slowly but surely picking away at it. They're nice, gentle bees, and they're definitely darker than the uh, ones I flew with yesterday that were in the bucket. Maybe slightly different genetics. A little more varied gene pool. These bees swarm, folks. Look at that. These two, uh, I'm gonna put these in and I got a bunch of other ones sitting on top of the frames. But the little swarm we saw earlier that left the uh, Japanese plum right there, more than likely was from this high, folks. All right. Back on it, back on it. Looks like a shimmer down. My memory cord got full, folks. <laughs> All this high definition business, you know. Trying to make good quality videos for y'all, and uh, the cord just ran out. Well, here's another queen, so they all over the place. So anyway, I'm back, and uh, so let me move. Move back for a minute so you can see what we're looking at here. See this cluster of bees? I'm going to film with the iPhone and give you a little more close up. But bees are going into the box, uh, so we got we're going to have to break this down. And then we uh, I have a deep with me in case they don't all fit. Normally, you know, they all I can make them fit in a new folks. And uh, but we do have a deep in case we need it. But uh, so let's, let's get on with it. Hopefully, uh, you know, I got it set up where it's kind of like coming in over me. So hopefully you could you could see me doing this and you're not just looking at the back of my head. All right, I don't think so. I think I got it positioned right, maybe. I don't know. But let me give you a little close up real quick. All right, so yeah, a nice pile of them. See how they going in, in the nuke, see that? So what we're going to do, I'm going to use a smoker, i got some honeybee going right here, and uh, I've just been grabbing pieces of, of the OSB and kind of, let me show you what happens when you, <laughs> they one on the edge right there. So I'll grab a piece and there's bees on it, I'll go ahead and shake the bees off, and, uh, and we just kind of, and then we'll expose the comb section, I'll pull the comb section out, and uh, we, we're just continuing this way. So. We get down to the nitty gritty, folks. All right, let's get to it. All right. Oh, when they, when they get you, they burn. Every stab, we've got like three stings, I think, and every one of them burn equally. You can't imagine getting stung like 25 times or something from them. You'd be hurt. <laughs> We're gonna frame this one up, folks. This is a good one. the queen cell that hatched out. Oh. Mm -hmm. I mention that because I think they did swarm. So again, that, that swarm we saw over there, I think came from this hive. There's a good chance of it. I'm going to smoke them heavy now because they're just kind of getting in my way. I can't just grab that OSB and start pulling it, you know? It's covered in bees, for one thing. Yeah, they're up there, 
let me see if I can and run them off real good. They may go airborne right now, because I'm going to hit them hard. here. See, before they swarm, they kind of put the queen on a diet and she stops laying. So there shouldn't be any eggs. It could be some larvae. Naturally, there's cat brood, but there shouldn't be any eggs. I think if there were going to be eggs anywhere, it would be on this frame here. I'm seeing a lot of nectar. No eggs. There are multiple queen cells and a lot of them hatched out. No, we're just putting the pieces together. I think the evidence is there. I think the evidence is there. All right, we're going to go ahead and put this in there. I can get to it. <laughs> Move this over. I don't know that I'm a frame up anymore, Coom. I, I think we got all we really need, to be honest with you. If it looks really, really good, I might frame it up. It's really not needed. get the bucket every now and then you got to help them out you know you climb up your knife and stuff though <laughs> yeah. so now there's probably like four or five comb sections left there's a little bit of wacky stuff over here with honey on it surprised we haven't run across any virgin queens yet. I think we're going to find some. Uh, I, I do. Like I said, if we don't, they're going to hatch out. All right. There's one. Look at that. I said that. And there, I got one. Boom. Just like that. All right, we just caught a queen. She could be a virgin. She could be made and I don't know. It's kind of small though. So we'll see. But she's going in the box, I can tell you that. Alright. I'm just going to put this on top of the frame for now. I think that's going to come up. Get it up without squinching anybody. Right in, right here. Smoke them, run them down so I can put the cover on. Yeah, move out of the way now. Let's have a lot of bees on it. <laughs> Check that out. Let's see if I can get over here. Some 
best of these, folks. What you think? Huh? <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna grab that deep. All right. All right. We're gonna uh, transfer our frames into this deep. And uh, give them a little more space. All right. That's queeny. Just get used to this box. This one has a, a, a lot nicer entrance, though. So. And it, it is a good bit of bees. So we'll, we'll let them go into this setup. Alright. Okay, on more than probably a handful of occasions of going into hives and open queen cells that were, that were capped and had a worker, a dead worker in it, sometimes as many as two dead workers. So what I'm getting at is if you're make, making splits and you're putting one, a single queen cell in your setup and you got a dead worker inside of it, you're not you know, you're gonna have a queenless colony. I always recommend you put at least two queen cells, okay, in a split. So, just for extra insurance. You're making a bunch of splits, and you're putting a single queen cell, and some of them are duds, you know? Uh, set you back. So, anyway, something to consider, folks. All right? I've got a deep set up. I may put spraying a little bit more uh, honeybee gone. See if I can't start getting some of these bees to run. I actually see another queen, folks. So, let me grab that queen. Come here. Come here, you. I think she's on here. Are you on here? No, I missed her. All right, let me go to my truck, see if I got some queen cages. I may have another queen catcher with me. See if we can't cage that queen. They're, they're kind of bunching up on a, a little piece of blocking, and uh, I should be able to find her again. So, And I'll show you what she looks like. at it folks we got him running in a box but uh, that queen looted me i think what happened is she ran on the underside of this railroad tire and i wound up cutting it open see as they run towards the box i'm going to keep uh, following with the honeybee going then i'll probably take the box and move it onto the plastic over there and just run them the rest of them out of that chute onto the plastic into the deep that's our plan fun with bees all right steve that's right fun with bees, bees. all right you can see it's it's uh, about almost dark now. We have a queen cage. I saw another queen. She ran underneath the railroad tire. There was a hollow area. You, you couldn't see it from the top. I wound up cutting the thing open, smoking the cavity, and um, I ran them out for the most part. But they're piled up in that chute right up underneath the edge of the box. We're just going to leave the setup right here for now, and I'll be back tomorrow and we'll, we'll see what happens. So either they're all going to go in or uh, actually there's three things that could happen. Uh, they could go in and they could wind up killing the queen that's in there and accepting the new queen. They may just join up, which would be even better, and, and they'll wind up being loyal to both queens. Or this queen and a good bit of them could wind up leaving. And you know we may have a swarm tomorrow hanging. But the bees, they cast a swarm. Like I said earlier, they, they I think they were clustered on the Japanese 
plum tree when I walked up we just didn't see it shortly after that maybe in, in the first 15 minutes they they got out of Dodge so it's kind of neat I didn't get any footage of it but uh, so we're wrapping this up for now so stay tuned for part two hope you all enjoyed part one Part two, folks. We're back over here and you see what we got? No big cluster on the outside. We got bees going into the box. And I called the homeowner a couple hours ago. And at that time, the cluster was still there. Partly because uh, it was still a little bit early in the morning. And last night, the temperature dipped down a little bit. It was a little foggy, so it was probably a little dewy. As it's warmed up, the bees broke cluster and they've gone in. I know for a fact there's more than likely two queens in there. One caged, the one I caught yesterday, and the one I saw yesterday yesterday i think they're both in there i think i'm gonna go ahead and pull the top just for a quick peek and take a look at the one that was caged i got a suspicion that they may have killed her and accepted the other queen because uh they were piled up over here yesterday and that's where that other queen was and then there was a good bit of them and i'd cut that little opening in the, the railroad tie and i ran the majority of them out they wound up going over to the box and clustering on the outside and in that channel on the front end of the channel and they spent the night like that now they're going in so i can only assume that other queen probably went in they both might be in there alive and well but we're going to take a peek anyway so let's do that now all right i got my uh i got a queen catcher on me and i got a queen cage just in case we run across <laughs> more than uh more queens than we know what to do with so a little extra insurance but let's go ahead and, and see what's going on in here and they're all in that's great very cool so let's just see see what's going on well, let's, let's just take a peek at things though maybe i'll be able to find it of the queen maybe is there a lot of bees on this frame very chill we need to just take a look at things to see if we can spot that other queen and let's just go ahead and put this back I'm gonna check that uh, that queen that's in that catcher though. Let's do that. Let's do that. There's a good bit of bees on this frame. I'd, I'd say she's probably alive and well. Oh yeah, they're covering her. They're covering her big time. Let's see if we can spot her. <laughs> they are full up in that thing. All right, less. All right, I just saw her move. All right. All right, she's alive and well. It looks like all the bees are in here, too. Awesome. You know, there's a good bit of bees in here. You know what? I think I'm just going to go ahead and put it, put it back together. I'm not going to disturb them much more. So if they have the other queen, she's staying. And they'll just accept both of them for the time being, at least. I don't think they're going anywhere. So, let's just put everything back together and I'll be here tonight.
All right, folks, just about a wrap on this one. So, interesting removal. Uh, the mystery in all this is the uh, handful of queen cells that had dried up royal jelly, like little plugs, with some dead queens in the cells. And one of those queens, her proboscis was sticking out, a little bee tongue. So I don't know why they died in those cells. Uh, maybe the royal jelly was just not nutritionally sound. I've never heard of it. I've never seen it before. And I've already talked to a couple of friends who have never run across it as well. So, But I'll get to the bottom of, it, bottom of it, I believe, one way or another. Or it might just be one of those mysteries. You know, not, not everything uh, with bees is in the textbooks. Uh, you know, every now and then you run across something a little bit unusual. I think that's, it's like that with a lot of things. In a nutshell, uh, the queen we caged yesterday is alive and well. They're covering her, they're tending to her. And I think that uh, that other queen that I saw is in the box as well. So I believe they have two queens in here right now. I don't want to dig through this too much and cause them to maybe get riled up and maybe, you know, some of them to leave, maybe that, that other queen to leave. So uh, I'll be back tonight to pick them up. That's a wrap for now. I hope you're having a fantastic day, because you know I am. Until the next one. Fun with bees. <laughs>